welcome to Empower and thank you so much as usual for watching my channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video we're going to go over the neuromuscular components that help with muscle contraction. Now this is the 18th video in this Anatomy 101 series so if you have not seen the other videos make sure you click the link above where you can review the entire course. There's a lot of information to go over in this video, so if you need to watch the video twice, perfectly okay. All right guys, let's get right into the video. All right, muscle contraction. Muscle contraction applies to a single fiber and is dependent on a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which you might see abbreviated as ACH, which is one of the chemical neurotransmitters in addition to dopamine, GABA, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. This transmitter is released by the presynaptic end of a specialized motor neuron. Acetylcholine, or ACH synthesis, is done in the motor neuron's cytoplasm, which is a fluid-like material in a living cell, by the action of the enzyme choline acetyltransferase. A tip is that whenever you see a word ending with ace as the suffix, this means that it is an enzyme, and an enzyme is a biological catalyst which brings about a specific reaction on two compounds named acetyl-CoA, which has involvement in the Krebs cycle, and a component called choline. After synthesis, the neurotransmitter is stored in a voltage-dependent calcium channel regulated synaptic vessels. A nerve's electrical impulse is the cause of acetylcholine release. Muscle synaptic clefts are regions between the motor neuron axon and the motor end plate. The skeletal neurons are very short, allowing the acetylcholine to diffuse very fast, reaching the postsynaptic end and initiating a response, in this case, a muscular contraction. After the neurotransmitter has initiated the response, it has to be broken down in order to terminate the response. Acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme responsible for its breakdown, including the cellular reuptake of the neurotransmitter. The muscle impulse released after the acetylcholine reaches the motor end plates triggers a muscular impulse that's similar to the nerve impulse to be transmitted all over the muscle cells and it enters the specific transduce tubules after which it diffuses into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That is the equivalent of a cellular's endoplasmic reticulum ending up in the cisterna. Acetylcholine after diffusion across the neuromuscular junction potentially binds to its receptors on the motor and plate of the muscle sarcolemma, which is a membrane that envelopes a skeletal muscle fiber. And this triggers entrance of positive ions inside the muscle fiber, leading to the depolarization of the muscle fiber, reducing its membrane potential. Depolarization means a change within a cell when it undergoes an electrical charge. Depolarization of the sarcolemma leads to the opening of a voltage-gated sodium channels, allowing the entrance of sodium ions inside the muscle fiber. This triggers an action potential to move across the whole sarcolemma, causing the excitation part of excitation-contraction coupling. Action potential means the change in the electrical potential associated with the passage of impulse along the membrane of a muscle cell or nerve cell. Repolarization occurs instantaneously and the sarcolemma gains its negative membrane potential and the acetylcholine is broken down by acetylcholinesterase. Repolarization refers to the change in membrane potential that returns to its negative state. The muscular sarcoplasmic reticulum contains a much different and higher concentration of contractile calcium ions than the muscle cytosol because the sarcolemma or the muscle cell's membranes has calcium ion pumps that are relatively active, allowing the entrance of calcium ions via the transverse tubules and surrounds the myofibril. Myofibrils are elongated contractile threads found in striated muscle cells. Membranes on the muscle cisternae respond to the presence of a muscular impulse by increasing their permeability towards calcium ions allowing the ions to enter into the muscle's fibers cytosol from the cisterna. Cytosol is the liquid component within the cell that organelles and the particles are suspended. The sarcolemma has voltage-sensitive receptors called the dihydroparity, 
receptors that link to the ranadine receptors, which are the receptors responsible for the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Voltage-sensitive dihydroperidine receptors are affected on by the action potential and cause the ranodyne receptors to open, leading to the explosion of calcium ions into the muscular sarcoplasm, causing the sarcomers, or muscle cells, to shorten, initiating a visible response. The sequence of muscle contraction usually starts from the release of acetylcholine, or ACH, by the motor neuron up to the point where there is an initiation of muscular contraction by the calcium ions and can be illustrated by the use of the sliding filament model theory. The muscle fibers and the single motor neuron attaching to the motor end plate forms the motor unit. An impulse travels to the motor unit's muscle fibers, causing a reaction to occur between the myosin and actin filaments, triggering the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. The triggered reaction due to the muscle impulse makes the myosin filament's heads to elongate and attach to the filament, and finally they pull the actin filaments to the middle of the sarcomer. This process is reciprocated throughout the sarcomers and causes all muscular sarcomers to shorten. Tryptomycin, a muscle protein, is found around actin filament chains and it acts to seal the myosin binding sites. It is linked to the troponin to form a complex which presents the myosin from binding to active microfilament sites. Calcium ions also have a tendency to bind to troponin. Muscle contraction is initiated by tryptomycin, moving and exposing the binding sites for myosin on the actin filaments. This further allows a cross bridge to be formed between the myosin and actin filaments. Calcium binds to the troponin and tropomyosin slides from the actin filament binding sites, allowing the heads of the myosin to bind to the actin's active sites, hence forming the cross bridge. Myosin heads then pull the thin filaments and slide towards the sarcomers center past the thick filaments. The myosin head pulls the thick filament briefly, briefly reaching its limit and recocks to pull again, consuming adenosine triphosphate, which is also known as ATP. The action of the repeated pulling and detaching to cock then attaching is called the cross bridge cycle and is similar to the actions of rowing a boat. The myosin heads are pulled, then detached and recocked then the motion continues, consuming ATP. A contractile cross bridge is formed when the actin links with the head of the myosin filament with the inorganic phosphate and adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. These are linked to the actin filaments. The phosphate is then detached creating a base for the actin to attach to the myosin's head and moves nearer to the M line, which is the line between the thick and thin filament, at the same time also pulling the actin filament, creating what is known as a power stroke. A myosin filament has an attachment site for both ATP and actin, and when the myosin binds to the ATP, it lets go of the actin filament, causing the conversion of ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate by the action of ATPase on myosin. During the hydrolysis of ATP, hydrolysis meaning the chemical breakdown with water, the myosin head moves into a cocked position to further its sliding. Myosin uses up the energy during the power stroke after which ADP is usually released, but the cross bridge remains intact, ready to attach the myosin when needed. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video. I hope you learned so much in a very easy to understand way. If you did like it, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also post a comment and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, there. There you will find specific tips on how to go through the book in a very fun and fascinating way. I also give tips on how to get the most out of lecture, how to review tools such as new models, 
orthodontics, how to optimize your group study time, and more. This program has been around for several years and it's helped thousands of students just like you. And it contains all the tips on how I went from failing anatomy to acing it. Also, make sure you stay tuned because in the next video we're going to go over how the cells get the sources of energy or ATP that they need in order to function optimally. We're going to learn about glycolysis or aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We are also going to talk about the different types of muscle contractions, isometric, isotonic, and eccentric, and we will also discuss muscle fatigue. So it's going to be an amazing video, make sure you stay tuned for that. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye. Bye.